And it's that time again on the Resource Hour where we draw on the expertise of the smartest man I know in medicine, and that's Dr. David Klein of the Stages of Life Institute. It's in Longwood. If you want to know more about it, directions and everything else, how about just simply going on your computer search engine, just Google out SufferNoMore.com, SufferNoMore.com, or, and rather, StagesOfLifeVitamins.com, StagesOfLifeVitamins.com. During this segment, we may do a minute or two on that. If we're not, we'll pick it up tomorrow. So, doctor, you wanted to talk about what you do, and a lot of our listeners ask that. They say, well, the doctor comes across so smart, but we don't understand his practice. And you're calling that, that practice, excuse me, precision personalized medicine. What do we mean? Well, it's a kind of a funny thing. You know, people ask me what I do. They ask me how I do it. They ask me what I am, which is sort of an interesting question to ask anybody. And so for the longest time, I had a difficult time answering it. You know, I've got five board certifications on the wall. They call me a super specialist, but really, I'm a GP, general practitioner. So when you tell someone you're a GP, then they start speaking to you in monosyllabics. You know, they start speaking more slowly for you. Uh, when in fact, it's, it's really a higher calling. It's a harder job to be a generalist than it is to be a specialist. That's why most doctors are specialists. I think it's an easier path to take. But it's an unfortunate thing in any event. And so what I do is a little bit different. Okay, and when you're looking at precision diagnosis, and you're looking at an individual, because we're all very, very similar in one way. We're all unique. I mean, think that one over. We're also very, very different, but we have that in common. So we have a commonality, and that's that we're all different. We have different needs, different experiences, different exposures, and that's a big deal here is the exposures. And consequently, you get treated differently, or at least you should be, with regards to an approach that the doc is supposed to take to your individual issue. So where does this go? Well, we can all start with genetics, and we can say, well, you know, we can blame your problem on the fact that you had um, odd genes. Well, it's funny because we're 99.99% identical. So really, we differ in very, very small ways. Yet, we look differently, we act differently, we behave differently, and we get sick at different rates at different times in our lives with different illnesses. Wouldn't you know it? Identical twins are born on the same day, but they don't typically die on the same day. They are born on the same day, yet they may not develop the same diseases over the course of their lifetime. Why? Because after the age of birth, their exposure to the environment changes. Their diet is going to be subtly different, especially if they live in different locations at different times. They may experience different traumas, different infections. All of these things add up to a different ex uh, set of exposures that change you in many, many ways on a genetic level. Now, that is sort of an odd statement. Because guess what? Your genes really pretty much stay the same way from the time that you're conceived. Yet, of the 15,000 identified genes, okay, how many are being expressed at any one time? They turn on and turn off like so many flashing Christmas lights, okay? So when you eat a hamburger, you are uh, starting a process that changes the genetic coding within your liver, within the thymus, which controls your immune system, with, you know, within your, your heart, within every cell in your body, it changes differently. There are medications that do the same thing. There are infections that do the same thing. So when you treat a patient, when you look at an individual, when you look at a family, when you look at where they live, what they do, and, and what, their, what their history is, what their history is going to become, sometimes we know, know that is the future, you have a general idea of what you have to do and what interactions, what recommendations we make as physicians. We make recommendations all day long. Some of them are called prescriptions. Some of them, yeah, it's called fatherly or motherly advice. But they're prescriptions nevertheless. These are things that we suggest that you do very, very typically in written form to make a change in your life. Now, the hope is, the expectation is, that the change is going to be for the better. But it isn't always the case, and this is where precision comes into it. We need to know exactly, to the extent that we can, in terms of technology and financial resource, what is going on with you, for better or worse. You know, when you're sitting back trying to figure out what's going on when somebody's ill, you're already late in the game. 
Okay, you're trying to fix a problem that's had plenty of time to become entrenched. Sometimes problems are easily fixed early, sometimes not. Sometimes they are presenting at a time when they're not fixable at all. So the real trick to this is personalized medicine. Precision, we need to know precisely what you are, what's going on with you, what your situation is at this particular point in time, and then we personalize it in order to prescribe whatever medications we're doing. Hence the phrase, personalized prescri uh, you know, precision personalized medicine. Very, very simple, very straightforward. So where do we start with an individual? Okay, we typically start with diagnostics. Now those diagnostics could be electrical in nature. An EKG is a very, very useful uh, device. It tells you what the heart's doing electrically, but it doesn't tell you what it's doing mechanically. Okay, you know, at the end of life, very frequently we, something, we, we see something called electrical, electrical mechanical disassociation. So you, you have an electrical EKG, but the heart's not beating. Okay, that's usually what happens just before you die. Okay, there's electrical activity, but no function. Well, electrodiagnostics are really more useful when they're, when they're there to prolong your life rather than to pronounce you dead. So what else do we look at electrically? We may be looking at nerve conduction studies. We may be looking at EMGs. We may be looking at EEGs. We may be looking at other functional studies of the electrical portion of the nervous system in order to establish health, find out if anything's wrong, and try to deal with it before it becomes a problem. Well, what other parameters do we look at? Very, very commonly, we look at blood work. We look at your analysis. We test all of these different uh, bodily fluids, functions, you know, substances to see what's going in and what's going out in order to get a general idea of how you're doing. These days, however, there's even more. Okay, we're looking not only at your particular health, but we're looking at the health of the organisms around you. Now, that's not your brother and sister, your mom and dad, but the organisms within your gut. And this is interesting, okay, because there's, oh, 80, 90 times more DNA in the organisms in your gut than there is in your entire body. Now, that is a, that's saying something. That's corporate knowledge, okay? The gut is now being found the bacteria, the uh, viruses, and everything else that's in your gut, down to the parasites, are now showing that they influence the way your immune system operates. So what you eat, okay, is going to tell these little critters what they need to do, and in turn, they're going to tell your body what it needs to do. So you're getting instructions from the bacteria in your gut on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. Now you're going to think that that's insane, but it is not. What is crazy, though, is the fact that that bacteria milieu, in other words, the, the, the makeup of the gut bacteria, changes about every 10 feet of your gut. Okay, so it changes from your mouth all the way down to where the sun doesn't shine, and all of this influences your state of, of health and your state of disease. Now, why should you care? You know, there's a lot, of, a lot of things to worry about in life. Why should you care about these single-cell creatures, multiple-cell creatures in your gut? And the answer is this, because their health, their balance is going to lead to your longevity, your health, and subsequent um, so, you know, disease states. And how does this work? Well, what separates you, okay, and your bloodstream from what's going on in your gut is a single cell layer thick, okay? So when you get an upset stomach, a little gastritis, that barrier okay, is breaking down. And when that happens, substances from inside your gut get into your bloodstream and wreak havoc. Okay, this is a big deal. And what sorts of things will do this? You're going to go, well, it must take some kind of major disruption. And the answer is not so fast. Okay, if you've ever burned yourself, you'd realize that that's, you know, the, the, the skin is oozing. Okay, it's oozing serum out into, into the environment. Well, just as easily, things get from the outside in, which is why you put a Band-Aid or a bandage over a wound. But what do you do on the inside of your gut? What do you do? Okay, so now you've got a burn on the inside of your gut from doing something stupid like eating the wrong food. What makes it the wrong food? You know what it is because you know that certain things make you feel bad. Certain things make you feel good. This is the difference with what we do. So we look at you genetically. We look at your body chemistry, the fluid chemistries, and then try to figure out what it's going to take to keep you healthy. If you're ill, what it's going to take to make you feel better. And the highest calling of all is to make sure that you live a long, happy, and healthy life 
because really nobody wants to live into old age and not be healthy. It's just not something anybody really wants. Were it not for that, we wouldn't have these health directives, you know, end of care uh, directives. Ergo, stages of life. If you want to know more about the doctor, more about their ability to diagnose, they have so much technical equipment, it will spin your head. All you need to do is go to SufferNoMore.com, SufferNoMore.com. And if you want to take nutraceuticals and keep them coming, boy, keep them coming on time so you don't run out. You've always got an ample supply standing by. That would be stages of life vitamins dot com stages of life vitamins dot com more with the doctor coming up tomorrow coming up tomorrow